your background in it. So how did when did you first become a flat earther and, and what happened? What what did you see that made you think about things differently? Well, I got into flat earth in the summer of twenty fourteen when it was right. first the subject was first kind of broached to me on YouTube where uh, a guy out of Germany was looking into mm -hmm. flights in the southern hemisphere and it didn't seem to they didn't work very well the flights in the southern hemisphere looked really odd to him and at the end towards the end of his mm -hmm. thing he goes you know it only makes sense if the earth is flat but that's ridiculous mm -hmm. right it can't it can't be true so mm -hmm. i thought I, I turned into a thought experiment for me which was okay you know what i, I like this enough Let, let's see where I, where it goes and I started playing with it. And I, first I started uh, to disprove. Everybody that goes into the flat earth, they start out trying to disprove it. In fact, the t-shirt says I became mm -hmm. a flat earther because I tried to debunk flat earth. Because nobody mm -hmm. wakes up one morning and says, oh yeah, this is the greatest idea ever. I think I'm gonna go into it. Everybody hates it, which is an amazing mm -hmm. testament to the topic. Everybody starts literally going after it and saying it's, it's stupid and you gotta wonder why. In fact, I remember before I clicked on my first Flat Earth video, I remember mm. physically getting flushed, physically getting embarrassed before I clicked on it. And and I've, I've you know, you like anybody else, I mean, we've all clicked on some pretty weird stuff on the internet. <laughs> it, it doesn't it doesn't embarrass us that much, right? I mean, there's a lot of freaky stuff <laughs> out there. But this one, I literally felt my face get hot. And I was going, why is this? I mean, I there's no way this should be affecting me like this. And the mm. more I dug into it, the and and so I didn't. I literally did not make my first YouTube video on the topic until February of 2015. And right. when when I did that, I, you know, so I basically got to a point where I flipped. It, so I, for for nine months or so, I worked on it off and on and said, okay, how can I disprove this? Thought I could really disprove it in, in a few days. And nine months later, I'm sitting there going, I can't prove the globe anymore. I literally cannot mm. prove, not without a shadow of a doubt. And then I decided, okay, I'm just going to make a series of videos. So I made made some videos called Flat Earth Clues. Start out really mm. small, little 15-minute chunks. Put them out to the internet and said, you know what? I don't think it's a globe. Uh, prove me wrong. And put... And and what, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Keep No, keep going. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, and, and so when I put it out there, I thought that people would shoot it down. And instead, just the opposite. Yeah. Uh, just the opposite happened. People started calling because I honestly thought some professor, some astrophysicist, some astronomer was going to call me up and or write me a nice letter and say, "Okay, look, no offense, but your math is all wrong, or your ideas are all screwed up, and there's nothing. There's nothing here. Here's where you went wrong. It's 100% mm -hmm. debunked, and then you can take down your channel now and not have to deal with this nonsense anymore." But it was the opposite. Yeah. People were intrigued by it, and then I started getting subject matter experts, you know, from all branches mm -hmm. of the military and pilots and air traffic controllers and engineers, and they're all saying the same thing. It's like, holy smokes, you may be onto something because everything we use in our daily lives points to no curvature at all. I'm going mm -hmm. okay, so so I'm that's 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 how I got into it, and then and that was back in 2015, and then everything just started steamrolling from there. Yeah, so one of the things that, that Gary touched on when he was talking about that was, you know, out of everything that, that people debate in the Flat Earth Society, the one thing that he's absolutely certain about is that the, the Earth is flat. Everything else he feels might be still open open for debate, because I know that there's a lot of debate around whether gravity exists, whether the sky is really there, whether the moon is the moon, you, you know, things like right. that. So there's a lot of debate within the society itself, but he himself... He, he knows for certain that the earth is flat but everything else is up up for the discussion is that how you feel about it or are there other aspects that you're all it, it is and as, it? as a matter of fact i use an analogy and now i can finally use it to somebody who's in scotland because i, I use <laughs> i use it all the time i compare the the flat earth community to the um, clans uh, of the scottish highlands and that is there's a mm -hmm. whole bunch of and screw it for you know correct me if i'm completely butchering this but it's, it's like it's like there are a whole bunch of different flags on our side of the field right 
And so there's some people that believe in a dome or a firmament. Some people believe that there is no dome. Some believe that the, the mm. sun and the moon aren't physical objects. Some people, you know, it, it, gravity doesn't exist. And, I mean, it really varies. There's a wide uh, 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 buffet of different ideas as you go down the line. But what we can agree on is that we're all on the, si on the same side of the field. Whereas on the other mm. side of the field, there's just one flag, and that's the globe. I'm not going to say that it represents mm -hmm. England or anything. I don't want to get in trouble. But yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what it really don't turns... Don't go down that route. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, we don't want to do that. But, it's, but that's what it turns into, where it, everybody's on this side, but we all agree we're on this side. So that's why the infighting is sort of mild. It's like, oh, fine, you don't believe mm -hmm. in a dome, I do. I'm not going to hate you for it. It just means we disagree in our ideas, but no, nobody's going to know until we get to that point where some whistleblower comes in or, or we find out for sure. But yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I can tell you that the majority of the people believe in some sort of firmament, some sort of structure. I, I, that's where my mm. thing, you know, my website's called enclosedworld.com. When I went into the clues, I talked yeah. about that there's some sort of dome structure. I'm not going to ignore the fact that most of your major religions in in ancient times talked about some sort of dome like structure i mean I, that would be mm. irresponsible of me to to just ignore it's like because that then you're working against two different forces not only are you working against different people in the flat earth but you're working against organized religion it's like eh, i'm not going to do mm. that so but yeah he's absolutely right other than we know that it's flat we don't know the the exact shape but flat takes you a long way Meaning, you know, yeah. it's at the very least, it's not a globe. That's what everybody can agree on, and which means we do have a yeah. co common enemy. Uh, you know, I'll pick on the American space program. NASA was the the first one out of the gate. Well, other than the Soviet Union as well, but now mm. all the other space programs, we can we can focus our efforts against them. Okay, and in terms of experiments for, because you know, obviously there's debate about the other parts, like you're talking about there. So, mm -hmm. how how are you trying to overcome those debates to try and get one answer? Is there experiments that are ongoing about, um, you know, whether gravity exists and how would you go about making that kind of experiment work those... or proving it? Or go ahead. So no, on you go. If... Oh, okay. The well. It's tough, other than the flatness itself. And the flatness itself, we've got a whole bunch of experiments that go along those mm. lines. You know, because it, most of the experiments in regards to the actual curvature of the Earth, just people going down to the beach with cameras and, and shooting long distances, mm. that's that's the easy thing to do. because And, and anyone yeah. can do it, which is one of the reasons why this thing's resonating so well. As far as the other experiments, it's very, very difficult because the the powers that be have locked down access to the the better things like you know civilians we don't have spaceships civilians cannot go mm -hmm. into space that that'd be the you know we're launching weather balloons as fast as we can as, as fast as we can antarctica we'd love to go down to antarctica but even if we did chances are we're not going to have free reign i mean the antarctic treaty is is rock solid so and, and it, it, that kind of tied into the some of the things I talked about in Flat Earth Clues, which is, look, the powers that be have had six decades to lock down the gates of the, the really important things. And that is you militarize space to make sure that nobody mm. goes up there, make sure it's, you know, that, that only that with the exception of, of recent SpaceX stuff, that it's mostly a military operation. And then Antarctica is locked down with the Antarctic Treaty. Those two are the are the really really big ones. When it comes to gravity, yeah, same sort of thing. You unless you can get away from the Earth to do independent objective gravity experiments, you're not going to be able to test mm -hmm. them down here. I know some people say, well, it's buoyancy or it's forward motion, blah blah blah. It doesn't really uh, doesn't really affect me too much because uh, mm -hmm. I I try to look at stuff from the from the higher altitude, the the, the fifty thousand foot view. So when people yeah. start arguing about, you know, what's magnetic north versus true north and what gravity is, it's like, eh. I mean, those are fine and everything, but the bigger picture, I mean, this thing is so big that you can look at the bigger picture all day and, and still not be satisfied. Mm. So, I mean, I, I know that your involvement in the conference is, is that you're going to be a speaker there. Um, mm -hmm. So what what's going to be taking place at the conference? How are the... the the speaking event is going to be set up? Is it going to be a case of you talk for half an hour and then it opens up to questions and answers? Or are, is everyone going to do their own kind of thing with it? Are we talking about the, the UK conference or the American conference? 
Oh, the American one, sorry, yeah, the American oh, one. Oh, no, the, the American one, what's happening, uh, it's, it's really varied because there's panels, there's independent speakers, and there's no workshops on this one. I think it's just panels and independent speakers. So, like, my mm. first day, so it's two days. My first day, I am doing a one-hour presentation sometime after lunch where it's just mm -hmm. me doing a, a thing of video. I think I'm going to do sort of a media recap of, well, it depends, you know, my, my speech has already changed three different times in, since <laughs> this thing was announced because things keep happening so quickly that now it's like, okay, uh, depending on, because like since, for, for example, around the same time you called or contacted me, we had a really, a really interesting mainstream breakthrough to where um, one of the major newspapers over here put it on their front page, and then we were contacted by ABC and HBO, and yeah. CN CNN did an interview with me, and was, so now it's like, okay, now I got to wait for those interviews to go see how <laughs> that gets pushed into the media, and that's going to affect my speech. On that's the first yeah. day. And then the second day, so I'm lucky enough, I'm going to do two, two things. So I'm doing a, a keynote speech on the first day solo. And then the second day I'm going to, uh, we're, the, the last event of the conference is a video award show, if you can believe it. There's so many people making videos. We're actually, and this is not our first awards thing that we've done. We did, a, we did an informal awards thing last year, Patricia Steer and I. On, on her show, mm -hmm. Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. But this one, she and I are going to be co-hosting the, the video awards program where we're giving out, I think, 30 different trophies under different categories for people that have made videos, which wow. ta which ties in. Let me let me throw this in real quick. And, and I have time. But, and by the way, I'm uh, just so you know, I'm recording this just so you if you want a copy, if you're taking down notes or anything. Most people, it's like, oh, you know, I wish I would have known what he said here. I can, uh, I, yeah. I'll, I will email you this whole thing. Just so. Oh, that's great. Thanks. Yeah, that no would worries. Be really helpful because usually I, my notes are an absolute scramble and I'm like, what the hell? Was that's that? a, I, and that's <laughs> I why I do means. it because other people have, have done that. They're, I can hear them typing or writing really, really fast. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? Why don't I just record this and send it to you? It's like, oh, that'd be great. It's like, yeah. yeah. So, so the point was there's so many people making videos on the topic hopefully it records i i don't think we're gonna have a problem it looks like it's recording just fine but if it if it does mm -hmm. i'll let you know but if you ever have follow-up questions you can always ask me which is that this this topic generates so much enthusiasm both for and against it's so polarizing that people have made a ton of videos there's so much content out there and if you saw the denver post article i wasn't kidding when i started doing this back in the in the first part of 2015 if you typed in flat earth into YouTube, you may have gotten 50,000 search results, right? But mm -hmm. we're not talking hits. We're just talking search results. And mm -hmm. you sort, you sort sort by upload date. So if you type in flat earth now, today, this morning, and sort by upload date, you get about 18 million. That's a mm -hmm. huge, huge jump. And that's mostly because people, it's a huge, it's a big fan. It inspires people to make videos either for or against it. And you're saying, well, okay, what does those numbers mean? Well, okay, you type in Lady Gaga and sort by upload mm. date. She comes in at about 16 million. You type in Donald <laughs> Trump, he comes in at about 19 million. In fact, he may have broken 20. We're sandwiched in yeah. between two massively marketed media campaigns. And again, it's just because people, the, the, I mean, I've made my channel alone, and granted, I've made more than most. I've made, as of this morning, I don't know, like 750 YouTube videos on the topic in two years and that and wow. and with and i just can i can just keep cranking them out I, it's it's easy to make videos <laughs> on it on it and people because one pe of the things that, go ahead sorry um i was just going to say one of the things that i i heard you speak about in one of the, the videos was the fact that when people start putting in the search terms earth is the yeah. first thing that now pops up is flat so yeah. that's been one of the upshots of of all the, the videos that have been made because it's now actually becoming the top searched Oh, thing, yeah. even when you you don't even have to put in the, the term it just comes up automatically i know i know it's it's frightening because in marketing people should really take note of this because you know there's people that spend <laughs> millions of dollars on google adwords and all these other search mar in internet marketing companies that will do this for you we did it it's just a side effect of what we were doing we yeah. were just making videos and all of a sudden in fact somebody told me you could type in is the 
All you have to do is type in those two words into a search engine, <laughs> and er, and is the Earth flat? It will will come up. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, the, the world's most prominent astrophysicist, even though I don't think he's really published crap. He, uh, <laughs> when you type in his name into YouTube, it's now comes up. The first thing that comes up is Neil deGrasse Tyson, flat Earth, which must kill him because <laughs> it, it shouldn't. But that's because we've made so many videos against him that he is mm -hmm. now tied to the flat earth topic because he is the fl the the front man the face of science uh, yeah it's, it's and has he ever came out and specifically said and hit back and retaliated against anything that you guys have done oh yeah or is oh, he yeah, just yeah, yeah, quiet? Yeah. He, he came in fact he was one of the first to come out against us and the reason was back in the beginning about a year ago in uh, in the beginning of 2016, there was a rapper, Grammy-nominated rapper. You probably wouldn't have heard of him uh, unless you like rap. Uh, his name is B.O.B. And mm. he made a video called Flatline where he, mm -hmm. he talks about Flat Earth. It's literally a Flat Earth song. And in it, he uses a, oh, God, it had to have been at least 45 seconds or maybe longer, clip of Neil deGrasse Tyson talking to a bunch of university students where he was describing the earth because Neil deGrasse Tyson went on this little lecture tour and during one of them he said that yeah by the way the earth isn't exactly round it's an oblate spheroid and it's also mm. pear-shaped because it's bigger on the bottom than it is on the top and mm. y which is really weird because every photo you ever see or every image that's ever simulated is always pixel perfect sphere so what exactly mm -hmm. was Neil deGrasse Tyson talking about and of course he's had to backtrack and say well no I meant Per se, you know, you can't tell visually, but from a from an academic standpoint, from a from a number standpoint, it's pear shaped. It's like really, because that sounds like you're just making stuff yeah. up now. But yeah, because Neil deGrasse Tyson came out. Oh, I'm sorry. The reason why. Sorry, I go off into the weeds sometimes. <laughs> the um, I go off on tangents. You'll have to stop me. Feel free to interrupt at any point. Where all of a sudden, what happened was Neil got a hold of that song, and. They put him on Comedy Central in the United States, and he goes on this six-minute rant against B.O.B. and Flat Earth, saying that there's nothing... It, sure, it looks flat, but that's because you can't get high enough to see the curvature of the Earth. And it's like, well, that's interesting, because technically what you're saying is the only people that can get high enough to see the curvature of the Earth are the military programs, and most notably mm. the United States military. And it's like, oh, that's, that's kind of a leap of faith there, man. But th yeah, yeah, he went off on a rant against us, and now he's paying the price. Wow. <laughs> I had no idea yeah. any of that was going on, but I'm going to have a look at that now and oh, see yeah. what I can find. Yeah, we, we had a weird mainstream surge during 2016 where yeah. he, he came out, and then the second group, here's, here's where the second, where it got interesting during the second group. There was an athlete that plays NBA um, or American basketball. And they were on their way to the All-Star break, the All-Star game. And during a podcast, he came out as a flat earther. And, you know, nowadays, you know, podcasts are, are just, you know, spread out everywhere instantaneously. So by the time mm. he landed, he had to go to media day the next day. What do you think they were going to ask him about? Think they were asking about basketball? Mm. Heck no. <laughs> They're kind of like, so we hear that you think the earth is flat. And that spread <laughs> everywhere. And then Neil deGrasse Tyson had to come out again, and Bill Nye, and there was a bunch of <laughs> a bunch of shows that came out against it because you know he was he's this not only was he uh, a, a professional basketball player, he was the current world uh, he had won a world title. He was one, he's mm. consider, still considered one of the the top I don't know five uh, uh, guards in the NBA. You, you know, young nothing. Well, it's uh, oh, I'm sorry. His name is Kyrie Irving. K-Y-R-I-E uh, is his first name. I-R-V-I-N-G. All you have to do is type in that, and that'll come up flat earth. If <laughs> you type in just Kyrie yeah. Irving, that'll be turned to flat earth. <laughs> and so that happened, and that started finally to simmer down. And then only recently, again, the we were just kind of getting through that, because that was, when was that? That was, Kyrie Irving was the beginning of this year. And mm -hmm. then that started to simmer down, and then now we've got the weird mainstream thing where, again, the Denver Post contacted me, Denver, mm -hmm. out, Denver out in Colorado, and then they just decided. I had no idea. Literally, I thought they were going to kill the story, really, because mm -hmm. they hadn't because they hadn't run it for like two weeks. And I contacted them. I go, hey, just let me know. I won't take any offense. I've seen podcasts absolutely collapse <laughs> after they have run something on flat Earth. 
And yeah. and they said, no, no, we're going to run it tomorrow. Oh, OK. And little did I know they ran on the front page and then that generated a whole new wave. So it's wow. yeah, it's been it's been fantastic. Yeah. And, and what about so the momentum's building? So, I mean, what do you think that's done in terms of membership? Because I know it's hard to put a number, a figure on how many people there might be in the world that are flat it's, air. It's, but if you it's could estimate. Millions. There are a Millions. lot of people. In fact, 90%, it's weird because I, I've tied it to the 1999 movie Fight Club, if you remember that, with Brad Pitt and uh, <laughs> yeah. Edward Norton. I tied it to that because it's like that. 90% of the members are hidden. They're in the closet mm -hmm. because they don't know who to trust. They don't know who to come out to. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we've heard, all heard the stories in the community. It's like, oh, you know, people get, they, they figure it out and then they go to a family dinner, you know, the, uh, mm -hmm. the next day and say, oh yeah, by the way, the earth's flat. You might as well tell them you're a heroin addict and that you're gay <laughs> and that you're all these other things simultaneously because people look at you like you should be in a mental institution. So, and if you want to know, I mean, again, the, the numbers on YouTube don't lie. In fact, uh, let me, let me, I'll make a reference and you'll get this one. It's kind of like the, um, the, the comedy thing, which I remember, it's kind of like the Spice Girls album, that big Spice Girls mm -hmm. album. It yeah. sold millions and millions of copies, but nobody owned it. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's, I like, mean. it's like, it's like, it, 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 it's like, okay, how does that happen? They literally million, you know, they Grammy winning <laughs> millions of copies and nobody admitted to owning the record. It's like, that's impossible. And that's the same thing with flat earth. There, it, there are millions. If you, if you think I'm kidding, um, you can go into YouTube and type in, uh, what's the, the, the highest one right now, type in under the dome, full documentary. It's got three point something million hits on it, right? It's not mm -hmm. even that guy's video. It's my video and he's <laughs> running it on his channel and he's got three million hits on it just for, and that's just a mirror of the Flat Earth Clues. Another guy ran, wow. took the, the clues and turned it into something called uh, They Are Hiding God with the Greatest Lie Ever. That's a two point something million hits. There's a lot mm -hmm. of people watching this stuff. I, you know, the, the, it's, but, but again, the community, it's be, so the meetups are happening now. But think of it this way mm -hmm. even if it's just, I'll, I'll just use the American population, even if it's just 1% of the American population, that's 3 million people. Right? That's, yeah. that's the sort of numbers we're talking about here. It's higher than that. I know it is. Uh, I walked into a, for example, uh, um, uh, I'll give you like a degrees of separation example. I walked into a Warcraft, a gaming, you've probably heard of World of Warcraft. I, I walked yeah. into a gaming forum, just went into it blind. Nobody knew I was there and I'm watching the chat and they are arguing about Flat Earth in the chat room in a Warcraft forum and I'm going and then I, I decided just to, to do a little plug and so I said oh yeah by the way research Flat Earth Clues blah 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 and they saw my handle because I always use my name as my handle Mark Sargent mm -hmm. right and they're going mm -hmm. whatever you're not Mark Sargent but good, good name though good you know thumbs up I'm going no no I'm, my name really is Mark Sargent they go whatever your name's not Mark Sargent <laughs> <laughs> it's like going, oh my lord! So that's yeah, yeah. There are a lot of people. It is it is, there the but I'm sorry to answer your your point as concise as I can. Ninety, <laughs> I would say ninety percent of them are closets, uh, closet cases right. because they, they. I know um, that sounds terrible to say. You know, oh yeah, they're closet, they're closet flat earthers, yeah. but they are because they just don't want. And what to, do your? Sorry, go ahead. And what do your family think of it? What do your friends and family think of you being a flat earther? Are they on board or are they against it? Or what's the opinion? Both. Both. They're mixed. Right. Because you know, like anything, again, it's so polarizing. There are some yeah. some that are some that like it, right? Some that are unsure because it's so strange to them. And then some that think, some think like my sister for example she still thinks it's a it's a joke that i'm that i'm pulling a prank on people i'm going really mm -hmm. you, really you think i'm gonna pull 700 videos really uh, 100, 100 <laughs> this much time on it as yeah, a 120 <laughs> interviews at this point uh, i i yeah the, if it is a prank it's one of the most dedicated i've ever heard of but no no mm -hmm. it's not but but the, that's the denial that, that people go mm -hmm. in because they just it's such a huge paradigm shift because we all know the globe's been in our classroom since we were what, whenever you start school six years old yeah that you don't want to 
believe the, the, the ripples go back when you finally hear about this because I, I, I've been trying to break down how, why people get so so upset and that's because it's primal the the ripples of hearing the flat earth go through your memory back in time all the way to when you're six mm. years old it's kind of like 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 discovering a repressed memory and you you yeah. some people have a really really tough time with it it's like no 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 i remember the globe when i was six years old it, it's like it's yeah. like hearing there's no santa claus all over again you mm. you don't want to hear it that, go ahead that, that's one of the things that dale mentioned when i spoke to him because he was saying that there was a meet up last week that he he organized and, and about 30 people turned up and one of the things he found was it was a people that that maybe had been flat earthers for maybe 10 15 years but they just hadn't told anyone until this point and then they just decided right i'm going to go to this meet up and talk to someone who actually right. believes in this stuff and then oh, see yeah. what that does and it just opened up their world and he said it was quite an emotional thing so a few of them were getting a bit upset and a bit teary about the fact that they'd been hiding it for so long. Oh yeah, you're, you're, he's absolutely right. I have run into mm -hmm. people who have cried to no end, uh, you know, on the on the phone at least, and, and in emails they, they express it. It's very, very emotional. And, and you're absolutely right. It's kind of like, because I've done several meetups, and the it's it's kind of I, I hate to use some of these comparisons but it, you know you gotta compare it to something it's kind of like a cross between going to an alcoholics anonymous meeting and some sort of coming out of the closet from a from a, um, a sexual standpoint because there's mm -hmm. all these emotions and at the same time you're finally around people that are on the same page as you and they aren't going to judge you and so, mm -hmm. I mean, literally, I've, I've sat there in a room. And it's like, yeah, you know, my name's Tom. Hey, Tom. Yeah, yeah. I'm a flat earther. You know, you know people are just happy. to, and, and then it's like they go into their story. And, and if you've ever yeah. you know, watched uh, AA meetings on television or in the movies or ever been to one, that's how it goes. You know, that's that's the intro. Yeah. And, and, and they're just so thrilled, the, the energy at these meetups, because there's been uh, a lot of them in the States recently. Uh, there's, they're popping mm -hmm. up, especially this year. All the videos you see from these meetups, people are just charged up, very, very excited, very, very emotional because they finally get to talk about it with somebody, you know, and it really, you know, some people have only been in it for a few months. Other in, in Dell's case, what he was talking about, people that have been in, have been suspicious about it for years. They finally mm. get to talk about it with people and uh, it's a fantastic release. It, again, I, which is I hate to say that use the word conspiracy because it's the only conspiracy where people it, there's this message of hope where there's this optimism yeah. if you think if people think i'm kidding look at the the songs that are written about it type in you know flat earth music or flat earth song into youtube i've got playlists now i've, I've we've got like 200 songs at least 200 tracks mm -hmm all upbeat songs they're not dark and sinister you know how many and mm -hmm. compare that to anything else i mean uh how many how many happy folk songs do you ever hear about jfk <laughs> you know the jfk shot in the head da, 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 da. you know you don't hear that whereas flat earth yeah. it's this big eye-opening revelation it's that emotion that dell was talking about put into music mm -hmm. And it's uh, it's fantastic. I mean, I get songs literally every week sent to me, and people I just keep adding to the playlist. I mean, that's that's one of our categories at the video the video award show this year is music really? because there's so many tracks. In fact, we're probably going to have to give three or four different music awards, which you know, well, if this thing keeps going, spin into like its own yeah. video, you know music award show. <laughs> MTV awards for yeah I know I know exactly <laughs> why, why why wouldn't it be it's it's mind-boggling <laughs> and we're talking about this in relation to flat earth a topic that should not be a topic and yet it just keeps resonating the ripples just keep getting bigger and and keep moving out farther and farther it's fantastic yeah so what about the social side because you've mentioned the meetups a couple of times so because I know that, that one of the things that Patricia Steer was doing was that she was having mixer events, and and also um, Gary had mentioned to me that there was um, flat Earth camp nights where they all went out camping and would discuss things and, and right. stuff from that. Right. Um. So so what tends to happen at a, a kind of 
a regular flat earth meetup? Is it just a case of all walking into the one room and then, you know, walk, walking around and getting to know the people in the room? Or is it more structured than, than that? What, it, no, no, it's really loose. I, in fact, because right. I've been I, f- informally uh, uh, shoulder tapped to, to to promote these things. So because I can I can build videos pretty quick now because I have templates and I've gotten actually not too bad at making videos. So people mm. will send me, they'll say, oh, yeah, we're going to meet at a bar. You know, and, Mm -hmm. you know, can you please, you know, at a bar, 7 p.m. next Thursday, promote it in Phoenix, Arizona. It's like, okay, you know, Mm -hmm. well, actually in Phoenix, Arizona, but it was different. They they met at a food court and a mall. Mm -hmm. Uh, Other people have met, you know, more formal restaurants. It's usually some some food. Other people have met at parks. It really, Mm -hmm. you know, Patricia's was was a little more formal because they were shooting. Mm -hmm. uh, There was a documentary team over out of Los Angeles that were shooting some of something there. But right. it really, I mean, they can be put together very, very quickly. Like, for example, mm. uh, HBO, if they follow up, they wanted to do a they wanted to do a meetup where they could film me in the middle of a meetup. And I said, OK, and, but and it's t- it would take literally two seconds to do. I just make a video and I put it on YouTube and I say, going to be Seattle meetup uh, this day, blah, blah, blah. And people will show up. Um, there were, in fact, mm. you want to talk about informal. There was a guy and, and I know his name's going to sound horrible. But his his flat earth his his YouTube channel is called Flat Earth Asshole seriously, and and, and well I mean he's he's nice. he's he's confrontational he's got that abrasive edgy thing going, and he decided to travel around the United States and just do meetups and so he would call like with maybe two days advance notice three tops and he would say I'm gonna be in Cleveland Ohio blah 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 or Toledo Ohio. Uh, you know, and he put a YouTube video out and, and people would meet him there and then put him up for the night and, and, you know, they go out mm. and do a hangout. And he literally went, I don't know how many states he hit, but he hit a bunch, uh, you know, all the way to New York and back. He, you know, he went from California, literally across the country. And yeah. that was, it was amazing. He did just a slew of meetups. So the last one he did was in Denver and the, the Denver one, I think got pushing 60 people. Which was fantastic, and other uh, uh, higher profile flat Earth people from from YouTube showed up at that thing, and it was a great closing event for him. And uh, I was really really mm-hmm. happy because he showed what can be done with a, a minimal amount of effort and you know mm-hmm. just some some dedication. Yeah, and does, and is there ever a, a time when you've um, advertised one of these meetups and actually people who are I guess. Is it blinkers? You would say people who still believe there's a globe. Have they ever? Oh, you mean like the globalists and... that show up and like try yeah, to troll yeah. it? No. Yeah. Well, well, ever... okay. There was the the Denver meetup. There were some globe. I mean, because that was a, a, and that was inevitable. When when you get a meetup to a certain size, there's gonna be yeah. some people that show up. But because they're so outnumbered. The, mm. it, there's there's only so much you can do. I mean, wait, really? What are you going to do? Are you going to try to go in and pick a fight in a, in a room yeah. where where you're outnumbered ten to one or twenty yeah. to one? That's a dumb idea. So most, but at the same time, the uh, the conference that's coming up in North Carolina, I half expect protesters to be there. By the time this gets there, there's right. going to be media there. I mean, people, the press mm. passes are already you know getting hard to come by. And I half expect science to make some sort of stand against us, mainstream science, by sending local university students or doing interviews, you know, where, where you have a science-based shows that are going to mm-hmm. try to, to do something. It would not surprise me. I'm not kidding. It would not surprise me at all if Bill Nye did not make an appearance outside <laughs> of the event or Neil deGrasse Tyson gave a statement against it. Maybe not in person, maybe not live at the event. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, yeah. what, or what about, you know, we still haven't heard necessarily yet from Brian Cox over on your side of the, of the water. Yeah. Uh, he's, he so has he's never, a, as far as you know, he's never really, he's never made a stand against it or well, made a point of mentioning it. He, he's laughed at the idea, but he hasn't formally acknowledged that it's a real thing yet where, where mm-hmm. media said, Hey, we, you know, nobody's pinned him down and said, what do you think of this, this flat earth thing that's happening over in the States? You know, in fact, once in fact, what, let's put it this way. Once he hears, once the website goes up, because it's going up pretty soon if it's not already in stages. Once the UK conference, Flat Earth conference, is announced, mm. I would imagine that people are gonna are gonna bring put this in his ear in his ear, and he's gonna have to address it. So yeah. yeah. 
Oh, that sounds exciting. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, I know. Confrontational. We'll get, of, it's it's so polarizing. <laughs> you cannot. Well, one of the things. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that Gary had said was that he wanted what he wanted to do on maybe the Sunday or you know, and the, the Friday night. Cause I know that he's planning on doing something on the Friday night. Was mm-hmm. have make a point of getting people with different opinions in the room in order to have a proper debate that is serious and that isn't that doesn't just turn into name calling or you know mud mudslinging. That actually was about trying to to get to some kind of standpoint against it. Sure. And I can completely see why he's trying to do that because. You know, there is so much, because as soon as you put a flat earth video up, you're going to get trolls who then start saying, oh, you know, go away, shut up, this is rubbish. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. Trying to, he's trying to meet it head on and say, well, look, come into the room and, and let's debate it properly. Yeah, yeah. and and I've, I've run into that with certain interviews. I mean, out of all the interviews I've done, uh, there have been a few out there. Most of the time, the, the station is so back on their heels, they don't know what to make of it. Because, because mm-hmm. when you hear it for the first time, yeah, you might get upset, but the fact that I'm on the other side, you know, preaching it, they they don't really they, they don't have time necessarily right away to, to come and attack it. But I have done some shows where they knew going in what their stance was, where they where they actually did some research and said, okay, we're gonna come after him. And which is fine. I, 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 I can't really get mad at people. The difference between this and again other conspiracies, is that I can't get upset at people because I was in their shoes. It's like, fine, mm-hmm. you're yelling, you're upset. I, I completely get it because I was you two years ago. I or three years yeah. ago, in, in my case. I knew, I know exactly where you're coming from. So I can't get mad at you. I mean, it's just a process where it's like, okay, mm-hmm. fine, you're going through the denial and anger stage of, of this. I, I <laughs> completely understand. You know, I, I, they can attack personally if they want, but it doesn't really phase me because I would have been, it'd be hypocritical for me to, to say, well, you're, you're a jerk for saying that because I would have been literally in that same boat that, you know, not, not very long ago at all. Mm. So what happens if hypothetically you, you get absolute evidence that the earth is in fact a globe? I don't know how you manage that, but you well, know, what, what happens if you actually seen with your own two eyes that the earth is a globe? How, how would you take that? Do you think that that would be completely catastrophic for the way that you've been thinking, or would you be quite happy to accept it and move on? Or, no, you know? but I'm a big statistics nut. I love statistics. You know, I love percentages. Mm. I love the odds. And here's my, mm. here's my problem with, with what you just said there. The chances of it, if, it would, if that was going to happen, it would have happened by now. Mm. In fact, it would have happened mm. uh, in the first three months of this thing. If it mm-hmm. happens now, you've got to wonder why in the world nobody pushed this forward in, in the first place. Because other people have asked me kind of different variations of that question. Like, how, what mm-hmm. would it take? What would it take right now if, if you had a magic wand to, to prove it to me there was a globe? You know, what, what would I wish for? And it's like, okay, um, if you want just photographic evidence, somebody get a 4K camera and start running footage, literally a nonstop footage from a rocket pad all the way up to where the Earth starts forming as it's as it leaves mm-hmm. Earth orbit, and then let mm-hmm. that 4K that that movie be scrutinized by the best people we got, and say, oh yeah, mm-hmm. you know, because up until now the the NASA footage and all the European agencies and JAXA and everybody else, the footage is so terrible that including going all the way back to Apollo, the Americans, it's mm. it's aged so badly that we've just shredded it. Nothing's even come close when it when it comes mm. to footage. So yeah, it would be catastrophic if somebody could prove it to me. But I yeah. don't know how you would do it. I mean, yeah, you could I mean, yeah, you could you could put me in the SpaceX shuttle that supposedly they're gonna they're gonna put around the moon next year, which is never ever ever gonna happen. <laughs> I don't even know why they suggested such a thing. I mean, it, seriously, it's it's ridiculous that they would even hint at it because you're talking about something that NASA hasn't even tried for 50 years. So mm. what are you what are you doing exactly? So I don't but think if it's someone I, offered you a ticket for that. Would, would, you, would I go? Would you of course I would. Of course I yeah. would. Yeah. But I know I know what would happen. The odds say that if I if somebody gave me a ticket, what would happen is I would be brought into a room with some fairly heavy, <laughs> heavy handed government people. And they'd say, OK, you're going to sign this disclosure agreement. You never, ever get to talk about it. You, get, you talk about it. It will be very bad for you. And mm-hmm. then and they, they would basically try to. Well, you know, what's the line? Um, because we saw this happen with one of our own. 
uh, conspiracy guys, Joe Rogan, which is they offer you the carrot and the stick at the same time. You never offer them just the carrot or just the stick. You you give them both because it gives you the out. If people know they have an out, they're going to take it. Joe Rogan mm. was, uh, and he wasn't even a flat earther. He This was back before flat earth, a few years before it came out, where he, an American, was go- he was going after, you know, he wasn't a, an A-level celebrity, but he had a pretty a pretty decent following out there. He went against mm-hmm. the Apollo program, and he said that mm-hmm. NASA was just a piece of crap, and, and there's no way, and he broke it down, and he was very, very passionate. And conviction will win the day, you know, all things being equal. And then all of a sudden, he goes dark. You know, no, and we didn't hear mm-hmm. anything from him a while. And then all, all of a sudden, sci- the Sci-Fi mm-hmm. Channel gives him a one-year contract for a brand new television show. And in the very <laughs> first episode... He recants and apologizes and said that everything he ever said about NASA was wrong. It's like, whoa, what are wow. you talking about? But he didn't explain. <laughs> but he didn't explain why. He didn't say yeah. why. Why? It's like, okay, fine, they're wrong. What? What convinced you? You know, never yeah. would answer the question. Never would answer. It's like, oh, great, they got to you. You know, they they put two briefcases in front of him. One was full of money, yeah. and the other had a gun in it. And they said, you get to choose which briefcase you know you walk out of here with, or not walk out of here with. And, you know, he he took the deal. And I think he's regretting it now because he's done, I I, I can't even count the amount of shows that he's done against Flat Earth. Even though he says, I'm never going to do a Flat Earth show, he just keeps bringing it up over and over, saying Mm -hmm. it's ridiculous and it's stupid. And he has Neil deGrasse Tyson on and astronauts. And it's like, oh, it's, it's irritating. So. Wow. I know. It sounds like it's entertaining. <laughs> it is entertaining. I mean, because he's the only conspiracy guy. How many, the only conspiracy guy I've ever even heard of that became a non conspiracy guy. I was like, oh, okay, yes. fine. You, you, you go down the rabbit hole, you climb part of the way out. That's fine. It's like, oh, fine. Well, you know, World Trade 9 11 was completely as advertised, or JFK, totally a lone gunman. But. Uh, but to climb completely out of the rabbit hole and say, no, conspiracies mm. don't exist at all anymore. I'm just going to keep doing, I'm just going to talk about um, yeah. uh, ultimate fighting. It's like, what, yeah. what, are you, what are you talking about? Nobody, yeah, nobody happened? climbs out of the rabbit hole entirely, man. Not, not without a severe mm. head injury. So, yeah. <laughs> well, that's been incredible. Thanks so much for giving me some of your time. So I'll tell you what, what's going to happen for yeah. us on our side so that you've got a sense of it. So, as I said, we're, we're meeting with some commissioners next week from a channel called Channel 4 over here. I don't know if you're aware of it. Um, is that is that BBC 4? Them... Or just, no, or just Channel 4? No, it's Channel 4. It's, so we have five main broadcasting channels in the UK. So BBC have BBC 1 and 2, then there's ITV, then there's Channel 4, and then there's Channel 5. Channel 4 um, also gets involved the... in, in films, don't they? Yeah, they do. They do because I've before. seen so I've seen Channel it. Four. In fact, I just watched a movie. Sorry, not to interrupt real quick. I just watched a movie. And I don't. You guys had to have been involved with it. I think it was uh, called Free Fire, where it was like mm-hmm. a little crime movie, and I think they were one of the producers in it, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Yeah, they so. might well have been because uh, they've done quite a lot of uh, kind of self-funding. Um, especially independent filmmakers, they get involved in that kind of thing quite a lot. But they're a massive channel in the UK. Oh, cool. um, they're one of the main broadcasters. So we've got a meeting with them next week where we're going to bring up, we're going to bring up the Flat Earth um, and Society to them. We're going to bring up the conference. That'll be fun. You know, for, from my point of view, I think it's an absolutely fantastic um, territory. You know, and I would really love to see it being made into something. So, as far as I'm concerned, you know, we're going to try and sell it to the best of our abilities to them, and and, and tell them what it's all about and what they're likely to see on screen. There's sure. no guarantees that they're going to go for it. So, you know, when that conversation happens, I'll obviously feed back to um, you and Gary and Dale and let everyone know. Look, this is where we're at with it. Cool. If if they if they say yes, then great, and I'll be on the phone, I'm sure, chatting to you and annoying you some more, finding out <laughs> as much information as I can. <laughs> um, but even if, if even if they turn around and say no, that doesn't necessarily mean that the idea is dead, because we might still feel that it's got legs somewhere else, so we might then try and take it to the BBC, for example, or something like that, but that's sure. a conversation that would need to happen. Uh, further down the line so if you're looking um, for a pitch by the way uh, if you don't mind me taking up a, a just another minute which is mm. the because i i've run into this with different people different producers because we we've been talking to producers mm. off and on you know since the summer of 2015 which yeah. is the the pitch is this is like love it or hate it nothing you it, flat earth is absolutely irresistible 
it cannot be ignored. And by that I mean I cannot I tell you the amount of shows I have been on where I get a follow-up email or a phone call later where they say, you wouldn't believe we have never received so many emails, so much activity based on this topic. You know, the, uh, there was a, in fact, I did a, an interview on, on one thing where it wasn't even supposed to be a call-in show. And the phone mm. lines blew up so badly that they turned it into a call-in show because people just <laughs> wanted, wanted a piece of me. They wanted a piece of the yeah. flat earth topic. The Denver Post received so many emails on it in you know just recently that they had to do a second mm. article just to print some of the emails you know it, it became its own wow. its its own entity it, it yeah. and, and if they have any doubts have them go into like remember those uh, those videos i was telling you about you want to go into to um under the dome full documentary in fact i'll send mm -hmm. you a link to it if you want and in fact, you know what? I'll send you the two links, uh, the, the under the dome and, and they are hiding God because it's the same video. Yeah. But the amount of comments, thousands, 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 thousands of comments where people are just going at it because, again, it's it's very, very polarizing. The, yeah. the, the, the producers I've talked to, they all said the same thing. And they said uh, the they don't care whether or not people are yelling against it or for it as long as they're talking about it. Yeah. And that's that's what you will absolutely guarantee, you know, with with mm -hmm. this topic. It is it is huge. Well, I think as, as well, this this you know what you're saying about you know ninety percent of flat earthers are actually still hidden. I think that itself is the interesting part as well because yes. you know you might think I might think sitting here that there's no one that I know that is a, that believes in flat earth, but actually that's just because I've not had the, the conversation with them. And if it came up, how many of people in my friends? Our family circle would actually say, "Well, do you know what? I actually think there might be something in that." So, I, I think uh, let that's me, let me, the part uh, that's interesting. Let me give you, sorry, let me give you one more quick story. And again, I'm going to send mm. you the audio recording of this, so you can play it back whenever. But I'll <laughs> give you, I'll give you degrees of separation. You've all probably already heard the six degrees of separation, where everybody's connected to everybody yeah. else. There was yeah. um, a friend of mine who who works HR for a company out in Denver she was talking to a friend of hers who worked floor, you know, they worked in a big building and he was like down three fours below her. And he comes up and he's talking to, uh, to one of his kids on the phone or texting one of his friends on the phone. And he gets in this discussion about, cause they were making her, his kids were making maps of the world. And he mm. showed him, he showed his kids a map and the kids goes, Oh dad, that's a flat earth map. Right. And mm. my friend goes um yeah she goes that's funny she goes i actually know a flat earther right and the guy goes pauses he goes it's not mark Sargent, is it <laughs> and she goes it absolutely is mark Sargent." and then all of a sudden they get into this conversation those two had never talked before about this but you're absolutely right yeah you could be walking down the street and you have no idea. We're trying to come up with, with designators. Nobody knows. Yeah. There's there's flat earthers <laughs> everywhere. They don't know who to talk to. It's not like that's yeah. the difference from Fight Club. Fight Club people had bruises and stitches and and you could always yeah. tell who was in Fight Club. But with, with Flat Earth, you don't know until it find I, I have this big revelation that, that when it's gonna when it happens or prediction, when this happens, when this thing finally breaks open, there's gonna be people people that are been friends forever. And it's like, Oh yeah, dude, I totally knew. <laughs> It's like, what do you mean you yeah. knew? It's like, oh, dude, I've been in it for like a year and a half. You too? It's like, oh yeah, it's yeah. it's it's gonna happen. So I can yeah, I can totally see that. You know, and I think that is that is the most interesting part of it. You know, what is the how much of a a spark of conversation are we gonna create if we make this program? And I think that's the interesting part because that keeps people coming back to it. Right. You know? Um. Right. So that's the part that that for me is the selling point. You know, so that's what we'll definitely be focusing on when we we speak to them next week. So cool. I'll definitely keep you posted on how that goes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, um, I will I will send you the audio uh, of this when we hang up. I will send you. Is there anything else you need from me, or do you kind of know your, your roadmap of where you're going? Yeah, I, th I don't think so. Um, because I, I think Gary's been really helpful as well. Oh and right, yeah. Gary will know of lots of stuff. Yeah, especially from the UK. Um, conference point of view, I think he's been right. really good at sending me the website and stuff, and even just the info that he's planning and doing for the conference itself. So that's all been really helpful. Um, yeah. But I mean, if there is anything that springs to mind at some point, then I'll definitely get in touch with you. And just oh yeah, yeah, shoot me a thing and, an and or something. I'm, uh, I'm, yeah. I've, by the way, I feel really lucky for uh, being able to being shoulder tap for the UK conference. 
I'm I'm no. very ex- excited about that. It, it should yeah. be a lot of fun. Because, uh, I mean, there's yeah. big, there's comp- they're completely different communities, but we do talk to each other mm-hmm. quite a bit. So it's, yeah. it's, it's going to be a good time. You know, I think even from just speaking to Gary, for because you know, I spoke to him on Monday, I think, this week, and, you know, he's, he, the passion that he's got for it came straight through the phone. I mean, I could tell absolutely that he was dedicated to doing this and wanting to do it right. So oh, yeah. that was really great to speak to someone who had that kind of passion for it. So yeah, yeah, you know, you I'm guys sure are... it's going to be a massive success. Yeah, I, I do too. I think it's going to be uh, fantastic. Again, if we can get that far before something weird happens, you know, you never never can tell. But uh, I'm I'm very excited. <laughs> yeah, well, that's all good. So thanks so much for giving me so much of your time today. And, oh, and I said, happy, if, happy, happy uh, you know, Yeah, if if anything comes to mind that I, I need to kind of flag up or but I've not got the answer, then I'll definitely give you a, a, a ping in over an email and let you know. <laughs> okay. Okay, so- sounds great. Sounds great. And uh, yeah, if anything comes up, let me know. Otherwise, uh, I will talk to you soon and have a great night. You as well. We'll have a great day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bye-bye. Okay, thanks. Bye.